11. From the balanced molecular equations, write the complete ionic and net ionic equations for the following. And then we have letter B out of the bunch. So in this uh, balanced equation, which thank God it's balanced, right? <laughs> we have uh, PBNO32 plus H2SO4 yields PBSO4 plus 2HNO3. And we have to do the ionic the complete ionic and the net ionic equations. Okay, so just know that the first thing is that they're called ionic equations because we need to get everything, if we can, in ionic or ion form. Remember that ions are just charged atoms, right? You're going to see a charge, right? So, for example, if I just write out, you know, K plus 1, that's an ion. It has a charge. If I have, I don't know... Uh, Cl minus, that's an ion. It has a charge. How do these compounds get made? Going back to like, you know, th the first couple of chapters, you know how to make these compounds, right? You always make them with their ions, right? The, the, the positive is always in the front and the negative is always in the back. And remember, like for example, if we had like Na, which is a plus one, combining with O2 minus, right? We did the crisscross method. I put a one down here to tell me that I needed one oxygen and the two tells me that I need two sodiums. So this would technically be Na2O. However, if we want to go backwards to get the ions, I can take the subscripts and crisscross them back up. Just like you can go down, you can come right back up. So if I do that, this two tells me that it's a negative, and I know it's a negative because it's the last element. The ones in the back are negative, the ones in the front are positive. And then this one tells me that sodium would be a plus one, so it, it checks out. That's what we're going to be doing here. So when in doubt, you could always do that type of crisscrossing if you don't know the charges. However, sometimes you will know the charge, either from the periodic table, or memorizing your polyatomics. So for example, PBNO32, what two things came together to form uh, lead to nitrate, right? Well, it had to have been the PB, and it had to have been the nitrate, NO3. I recognize that as a polyatomic. The break was right here, right? Oh, I don't know why that, how did that miraculously get here? Okay, so there's one lead and there's two nitrates, right? If I crisscross these back up, the one comes up here telling me that nitrate was a negative one and the two crisscrosses up here to tell me that lead was a plus two. Does that check out? Well, PB is a uh, transition metal, right? It's It's in the p orbitals, however, it's still classified as kind of like a transition because um, it can have multiple charges. However, nitrate is always a minus one. So if this checks out for nitrate, the other one checks out as well. So I have these two ions, okay? Let's keep rolling. We have, whoop, we have H2S, right? Where's the break? Well, I kind of noticed from my knowledge of peri uh, polyatomics that SO4 looks like a polyatomic to me. The break is H and SO4. Now, this one doesn't have a parenthesis, right? The NO3 had a parenthesis, right? Because I had multiple of them. But remember, if you don't have a parenthesis, how many polyatomics do you have? You just have one. So if you want, you could say that you have one SO4. And now you have those two subscripts. The two crisscrosses up to tell me that the sulfate was a negative two. The one crisscrosses up to tell me that hydrogen was a plus one. Does that check out? Well, yeah, right? H is a plus one. It's in group one. So if that's correct, that means the other one is correct as well. And sulfate is always a negative two charge. These are the same ions as before. So you don't have to do it twice. You can if you want to, you know, have everything nice and neat and under uh, the elements, but you don't have to. We've done the hard part. That's the hardest part of this whole thing, getting the correct ions. 
Now everything is just referencing this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write the molecular formula again, because you'll see that I am going to write on this again. <laughs> so we have PB NO32 aqueous plus H2SO4, and that's aqueous, yields PB SO4 solid plus 2HNO3, and that's aqueous. Okay. The next step is always going from a molecular balanced equation to a complete ionic equation. And then from the ionic, you can get to the net ionic. So what's the difference between these two? We're starting to get into our ions here, right? It's an ionic equation, which means that I'm going to have to write these things. So now we have to know who is going to actually break down into our ions. That's where the states come into play. As you can see here, I have a PBNO3, 2, which is aqueous. I have H2SO4, which is aqueous. I have HNO3, that's aqueous. And I have PBSO4, that's a solid. Just know, and I'll put it over here, that aqueous compounds will dissolve. That's what they're aqueous. Aqueous means that you will dissolve in your solution, namely water. Aqueous comes from aqua, right? Water. So will dissolve. All the other ones, solid, liquid, gas, they will not dissolve, okay? That means that you will not break them up into their ions. So if I look back at my compounds, since PBNO32 is aqueous, that means I will break it up and I will break it up into their ions. How cool is that? So the break, just like we did before, the break is here, which means that PB is going one way and the nitrate is going the other way, right? They're splitting up, they're becoming their ions. If you wanna envision something like this happening, this is when you add sugar uh, into your tea or coffee, right? If you add a little bit of sugar into hot tea or hot coffee and you s swirl it around, can you actually see the sugar anymore or does it dissolve? It dissolves, unless you're like me and you add 15 cups of sugar into one cup of coffee. That's the best way to have coffee, right? <laughs> but anyway, um, so it should dissolve. That's what's happening here. This compound, right, the sugar, is in solution and it just dissolves. You can't see it anymore. h 2 4 aqueous, it's going to dissolve. And here's the cutoff, right? H is going one way, sulfate's going the other way. This is a solid, however. Do solids dissolve? No. Solids will form precipitates. So this is a precipitate. Precipitate is just a fancy way for saying that you have a solid. So you cannot do anything with this. You will just drag this guy down. And then we come back to an aqueous guy. It's HNO3. I noticed that NO3 is the polyatomic, so that has to stay. So the break is here, right, between the H and the NO3. H is going one way. Nitrate's going the other way. And now we're ready to write our ionic equation. You're just going to reference what you have here, but you're going to write it in terms of the, whoop, what happened here? You're going to write it in terms of the ions up top here. So I won't just write PB for PB. I will write PB2 plus. That's its ion. And then I will say plus because you still have both of them. They're just together, right? When you separate, they're still together in the solution, right? They're just chilling away from each other. Nitrate is going to be written like this, NO3, minus 1. And now you just have to add a couple of things. You have to say the state. So I have to say that PB2 plus was aqueous. I have to say that NO3 minus was aqueous. And you also have to say how many you had of each. So for PB, you only had one. So I don't have to do anything here. But for nitrate, how many did you have? You had two of these, right? Now, how am I gonna write that in my ionic equation? The quantity number turns into a coefficient. You cannot put NO32. That is not proper ionic form. These are your ions. 
You can't deviate from these. However, you can put a coefficient in front of here to tell me how many you have. So the two becomes a coefficient. This two boop, pops right up there. And then you just continue. So plus, let's see, I had H and SO4. Okay, H and SO4. So H plus one and then SO4 two minus, right? Because I'm just talking about these guys. And I'll just get rid of that. You have to just keep saying aqueous, 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 aqueous over and over and over again. And now you just have to say how many you had. Well, here I had two hydrogens. I can't put a two down here. Quantity always becomes a coefficient, right? So the two is going to come in the front. Boop. And I'll just draw that again. And we had one SO4, so one SO4. And now I just keep going. This is a solid, so I can't do anything with that. So you literally just write it again. But then nitric acid, HNO3, is aqueous, so it breaks down. Here's the cutoff. You have H and NO3. I just referenced my, I, my ions at the top. I see that I have H being a plus one, and then NO3 being a minus one. Aqueous, 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 aqueous. And now we just have to say how many we had. Here, they told us that I had two hydrogens and two nitrates. So, what's the numbers that are going to go on the front? Two and two. And now, that's your complete ionic. Now, just make sure that you write this down as your complete ionic. Because when we finally get to the net ionic, um, you're going to see that we have to do something to the complete ionic. So just make sure that you write it down. Okay, now, what's the difference between a net ionic and a complete ionic? The net ionic only shows you what's the full-blown uh, reaction that's happening. It doesn't care about everyone that's in solution. It only cares about what's being made uh, from its ions. So for a net ionic, no spectators allowed right? Spectators of um, a uh, sport match. So like if you go to, you know, my, my favorite sport is tennis. <laughs> um, but when I go to, you know, a tennis match, I am just a spectator, right? I sit in the stands and I watch the tennis people or the tennis players playing. Um, let me know if you like tennis. Big tennis fan over here. But anyway, I digress. But I'm just a spectator. I'm not doing any work, right? Spectators don't do any work. Spectators just watch. So the net ionics, no spectators are allowed. So you need to get rid of the people or the ions that are the same across the reaction. And they have to be identical, right? So let's see. I see that I have a 2H plus 1 over here. And look, I have a 2H plus 1 over here. They're identical. That means that there's no gain, no loss. I can cancel these out, right? Is there any other ones? Hmm, I have a 2NO3 minus. I have a 2NO3 minus. That's identical. So that's a spectator. They're just watching. They're not doing the actual reaction. <sighs> Ooh. Maybe it's allergies. Sorry about that, guys. But anyway, so what are the spectators here? The spectators here were H plus and NO3 minus, right? PB2 plus was over here. However, I can't crisscross it out because it's not identical. Uh, your lead is with the compound here. And the same thing goes for the sulfate, right? Sulfate, there's no charge here, so you can't get rid of it. So whatever is left, you have to just rewrite it. So literally just rewrite from left to right. PB2 plus aqueous plus SO4 2 minus aqueous will yield PB SO4 solid. And that is your full-blown net ionic equation out of the huge molecular equation that we started with. So basically everything else is just chilling in solution. The only thing that is really reacting is the lead ions from lead nitrate and the sulfate ions from 
sulfuric acid, and they formed this precipitate. Yeah! What do you guys think? This was fun. Let me know in the comments if this helped you out. Click the like button, subscribe to the channel if you would like to. Love to guy love to have you guys here, right? Um but other other than that, I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Uh, keep studying hard and hopefully these videos are helping you. So check out, you know, all the other videos that we have. We have math. If you're in math class, maybe we have some videos for you guys that can help you. Physics videos also, so go check those out, okay? I will see you guys all in the next lesson. Bye-bye.